for applications. The programming language that's built into Microsoft Office and can be used to automate tasks and to generally make your life simpler uh, by cutting out the manual processes that eat up so much of your time. Let's talk about a couple of ways we can affect color in Excel. Now I've got my screen set up to have my Excel workbook on one side and I've got my VBA window on the other. Uh, if you need uh, information on how to um, get into the Visual Basic window and how to start creating a macro, you see I've got two subroutines or macros uh, set up, at least the start and end components, the sub and end sub lines. One that I've called colors with RGB and the other called colors with color index. So if you need to know how to get this stage set up, just check out the intro to VBA video, which shows you how to turn your Excel file into a macro enabled workbook and then how to get into the VBA window and start writing your code. Okay, so uh, this assumes that you know how to do that step. So I've got a subroutine and I want to, let's say I want to change the color of the header cells to blue. So one method would be to use the RGB color number. So an RGB uh, function inside VBA lets you pick a color with a combination of red, green, and blue to make up any color um, that you can think of. Uh, and actually you can find the RGB colors for a specific color in any number of websites. You can go to a website and you can just do a Google search on uh, RGB color wheel or color scale or RGB color picker and you can find a color uh, and find out what those coordinates are. But when I show you how to write this code, the coordinates, you'll understand how to, uh, where you'll put those coordinates once you find them. So let's, let's do this. Let's say range, and you might remember from a previous exercise that the range object lets us refer to uh, a cell or even a, a range of cells. In this case, I'm gonna say A1 through G1. So that's the range that I wish to impact. That's the range object dot and the property I want to affect is the font property uh, but there's a color uh, sub property of font so we have font and then dot color right so I want to set the color of the font in that range a1 through g1 now as I mentioned earlier we're going to use the RGB or red green green blue function and when you type RGB open paren you get prompts for entering your uh, red value, comma, your green value, and your blue values. Each of those values can be a number from 0 to 256. So if I want true blue, so to speak, I would have 0 on my red coordinate, comma, 0 on my green coordinate, comma, and 256, the maximum value for blue. So this is the RGB color coordinate set for pure blue with no red or green mixed in. Let's see if it works. So I've got this just one line of code to do that. I'm going to hit my run button and we can see that the font color did turn blue. Similarly, if I wanted it to be red, then maybe on the red color coordinate, I'd say 256 and then zero on green and zero on blue. And then we'll run the code after making that change. And now we can see that the font is red. Uh, but again, you can mix any values from zero to 256 on these uh, three coordinates to come up with some other combination that is a mix of red, green, and blue. So uh, you don't have to just do red or green or blue. I just wanna make sure that that's clear. So any combination of these various colors, uh, red, green, and blue can, you know, allows you to produce any color that you need. And I'm just putting in some random numbers here so that you can sort of see how that uh, shakes out. Run and we get different different values, right? If I tone the red down to maybe 100, and then run it again, and again, you get the idea. Now it looks a little bit more purple. Okay, so that's how you can set the font color with RGB, the RGB function. Let's say I wanted to also change the fill color of a range of cells, so the background of the cell. Maybe I want to do that in, say, uh, column C. So I'm going to say range, and if you want to reference the entirety of a column, you can do it just like how you might do it in an Excel formula. So if I say range C colon C, that's going to reference the entire column. And I'll say dot interior dot color. Okay. So that's the range object. The property that I'm referencing is the interior and a sub property of interior is the color. And again, I'll use RGB 
and let's say I wanted it to be green so I could say zero on the red coordinate and maybe not fully green so I'll say 200 I won't go all the way up to 256 and then maybe a touch of blue in there so maybe we'll put 50 on the blue coordinate so no red 200 on the green 50 on the blue we run it and there's our green color that we mixed up there all right so that's certainly one way uh, to do it all right now let's look at another method and that's with what's called the color index so Excel has a palette of 56 standard colors that you can refer to by number. And I've actually made a copy of that color index palette and stuck it here in my spreadsheet so you can see what they are. Um, and then there's a website you can go to you can search for this and find it just about anywhere. But this is the uh, Microsoft web address to find this color palette. So I just made a copy of it and put it here. So for example, index number seven is sort of a fuchsia. Uh, number five is a dark blue one is black 40 is white uh, there's a couple of colors that look almost identical to me these teal colors 28 and 33 and 34. so you can use the color index uh, property to uh, set one of these 56 values to generate a color let me show you how you can do it with the color index okay so uh, let's say i wanted to change the color of the font in column a so in my other macro here that I've got colors with color index, I'll say uh, range. And again, maybe I'll do all of column A. So we'll say A colon A, just like we did with C previously, uh, dot font dot color index, okay, equals, and I'll say um, 32, right? If we look back at that uh, color palette, 32 is like a dark blue, okay? And you know, we had done a blue before. Let's do something else. Let's do, um, ooh, let's do kind of like this burgundy color, almost like a burgundy or purple. That's a 53 is the color index. So I'll try that number. So we'll say 53. And then we'll run this macro. And there we can see that it has changed to match that. Right, so using color index, we can pick one of those 56 colors. Okay, uh, let's do the interior. You kind of do some of the same things like we did before. So if I want to change, say, the background color, uh, say in column E, I'll say uh, range E colon E, close quote, close paren, uh, dot interior, dot color index equals, and then let's say we wanted to do one of those uh, teal colors, like maybe color number eight. Okay, so we'll say color index is eight. I'll run my macro, and there we go. So we have that color in the background on column E. So you can look at these two methods, and obviously, um, if you have that color palette in front of you, you can just you know refer to it. But I prefer the RGB method myself because then you can blend those colors to come up with virtually any color that you need. So if you're trying to match, you know, the specific color green that's in your company's logo or a certain shade of blue or red or orange, uh, you can go and find what the appropriate uh, RGB numbers are and uh, set them using the RGB function, whereas color index is limited to those 56 colors. But these aren't the only ways to set the colors, but it's certainly uh, two popular and simple to use methods. I hope you find this useful. Please check in again soon. We're going to be doing a lot more VBA uh, exercises on the channel. Hope to see you soon. Have a productive day. Peace.